Happy Monday. I hope everyone had a um, wonderful Monday today and hope everyone was safe and enjoyed their day at work, at school, or at home, or whatever it is that you were involved in today. I just pray that it was great and it was wonderful. And I pray that um, God is just blessing you and granting your heart desires. So um, my day was great, went to school, um, came home, had to do a little work. So just got done with that. Thank God that it didn't take longer than what I thought. So, and now I am here with you good people. And then afterwards, I'm just gonna go with, the, re relax with the kids and, you know, and get them situated and start over and get ready for tomorrow. But other than that, my day was great. You know, I, it was good. Um, like a headache is about to come on but that'll pass but anyway uh so on to our chapter reading for today we are in um numbers chapter five and friday we left off on numbers chapter four where we read about the kohithites the mari rites and the gershonites and um how um Moses and Aaron had to take out a census of the Levite clan and assign to each of them their responsibility in the sanctuary and what they um, were to carry with the, um, within that sanctuary. Because remember, the Lord had left the uh, Levites off of the census back in chapter one, and they were to be responsible for um, all the, the tent meeting and all the furnishings within that. So that's what we left off on um, Friday on Numbers chapter four. And so moving along, we are Numbers chapter five. The purity of the camp, restitution for wrongs, and the test for an unfaithful wife. That sounds really interesting. So we're gonna get um, right into those um, three. And um, so I'm, I'm in the NIV, so you can follow along with me in the NIV or whatever phone, whatever um, Bible app or book you choose to follow along with me. Or you can just sit and watch my pretty face as I read the scripture for today. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, do a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the scripture. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today and all the blessings that came upon us today, Lord. Just thank you for waking us up in our right minds and for providing for us, for strengthening us, for clothing us, sheltering us, and for all the wonderful things that you have done for us today, Lord, and for seeing us through the weekend, Father, and bringing us to a new week, Father. Thank you for traveling mercies upon us all, Father God. Thank you for the word that I have right here in front of me, Lord God. Lord, thank you for allowing me to get my work done, Father, so that I can get on here and get this done early, Father God. So thank you so much for that, Father. Father, I ask that you will be with us, Father. Be with me, Father, and be with many others that will um, listen, Father, to this scripture reading, to your chap this chapter, um, Numbers chapter 5, Father. Ask for spiritual understanding, spiritual wisdom, Father God. Ask that you will be with me, Father. Open my eyes, my, my heart, and my ears to receiving. And open others' hearts, minds, and ears as they listen and receive your word as well. And God, please help us to apply it, Father, and help us to be blessed by this word. And let us not lean onto our own understanding, Father. God, just thank you for being with us. Thank you for all that you do. Continue to lead us every step of the way and show us the way. We thank you so much and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Levitic, I'm sorry. Numbers chapter five, the purity of the camp. The Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to send away from the camp anyone who has an infectious skin disease or a discharge of any kind or who is ceremonially unclean because of a dead body. Send away male and female alike. Send them outside the camp so they will not defile their camp where I dwell among them. The Israelites did this. They sent them outside the camp. They did just as the Lord had instructed Moses. So that was for the purity of the camp, to send those who had discharge, who were unclean, who had infectious skin diseases, or who were unceremonially un unclean because of a dead body. They were to be sent away, male and female. They were to be sent away outside of the camp so that they would not defile the camp. So those were the instructions that the Lord had gave to Moses to give to the Israelites. So they did as the Lord had instructed them to do. So restitution for wrongs. The Lord said to Moses, 
Say to the Israelites, when a man or woman wrongs another in any way, and so is unfaithful to the Lord, that person is guilty and must confess the sin he has committed. He must make full restitution for his wrong. Add one fifth to it and give it all to the person he has wronged. But if that person has no close relative to whom restitution can be made for the wrong, the restitution belongs to the Lord and must be given to the priest along with the ram, with which atonement along with the ram, with the, I'm sorry, I don't repeat it that again, along with the ram with which atonement is made for him. All the sacred contributions the Israelites bring to a priest will belong to him. Each man's sacred gifts are his own, but what he gives to the priest will belong to the priest. So they here we're seeing where um, the Lord is told to Moses for the Israelites for whenever a man or woman was to wrong each other, how they were to make restitution. So basically almost like make up for the wrong that they committed. They were to confess this. They were to confess the sin they committed and then they must make full restitution and to the person that they had wronged. So that was for the restitution of the wrongs. And last, the test for an unfaithful wife. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, if a man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful, and is unfaithful to him by sleeping with another man and this is hidden from her husband and her impurity is undetected since there is no witness against her and she has not been caught in the act and if feelings of jealousy come over her husband and he suspects his wife and she is impure or if he is jealous and suspects her even though she is not impure then he is to take his wife to the priest he must also take an offering for of a tenth of an ephah of barley flour on her behalf. He must not pour oil on it or put incense on it because it is a grain offering for jealousy, a reminder offering to draw attention to guilt. The priest shall bring her and have her stand before the Lord. Then he shall take some holy water in a clay jar and put some dust from the tabernacle floor into the water. After the priest has had the woman stand before the Lord, he shall loosen her hair and place in her hands the reminder offering, the grain offering for jealousy, while he himself holds the bitter water that brings a curse. Then the priest shall put the woman under oath and say to her, if no other man has slept with you and you have not gone astray and become impure while married to your husband, may this bitter water that brings a curse not harm you. But if you have gone astray while married to your husband and have defiled yourself by sleeping with a man other than your husband, here the priest is to put the woman under this curse of the oath. May the Lord cause your people to curse and denounce you when he causes your thigh to waste away and your abdomen to swell. May this water that brings a curse into your body so that your abdomen swells and your thigh waste away. Then the woman is to say, Amen, so be it. The priest is to write these curses on a scroll and then wash them off into the bitter water. He shall have the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse, and this water will enter her and cause bitter suffering. The priest is to take from her hands the grain offering for jealousy, wave it before the Lord and bring it to the altar. The priest is then to take a handful of grain offering as a memorial offering, and burn it on the altar. After that, he is to have the woman drink the water. If she has defiled herself and been unfaithful to her husband, then when she is made to drink the water that brings a curse, it will go into her and curse bitter suffering. Her abdomen will swell and her thigh waste away, and she will become accursed among her people. If, however, the woman has not defiled herself and is free from impurity, she will be cleared of guilt and will be able to have children. This then is the law of jealousy when a woman goes astray and defiles her husband. I mean, I'm sorry, go, when a woman goes astray and defiles herself while married to her husband, or when feelings of jealousy come over a man because he suspects his wife. The priest is to have her stand before the Lord as is to apply this entire law to her. The husband will be innocent of any wrongdoing, but the woman will bear the consequences of her sin. Wow, that's amazing. 
is amazing, but at the same time, it's a little bit scary. Okay, that concludes first. That concludes our um, chapter reading. But what's amazing is because sometimes when we suspect things, we suspect it. Maybe a woman's swinchin or even a man's swinchin, or we may find proof of it, or however, or someone just they just confess it to us. But here, he suspects but probably is not for sure. And so he brings her before the priest and this, um, this, uh, what is this, this, this drink? What is it? I want to say the right thing that she, um, this water, she is made to drink that water, this water that was um, going to cause a curse upon her. So this water that she was to drink was going to tell a whole lot because if she did do it and not admit it to doing it and she did it and once she drank this water this curse would affect her body and she would suffer but of course after she drank the water and this curse didn't happen upon her body and she didn't suffer and all these things that the lord said would happen didn't happen then that would prove to the husband she didn't do it but either way it was going to prove to the husband once she drank this water whether she did this, whether she committed this sin or not. That is one of, because it makes me think back to, wow, sometimes we have to sit and wait for the proof to come and just sit there and suspect whether our spouse cheated on us or whatever, or vice versa. So it would be nice to be able to have water <laughs> and be able to give to your spouse this sacred kind of water to be able to give to your spouse or even anybody at that matter, if they were suspected of doing something against you and you suspect it and you were able to, hey, you know, pray about it or whatever and be able to give them this sacred holy water and have them drink it. And whether they were, um, whether their body, you know, something was to happen, however it was to happen to be able to prove to us and show us whether they did this or not. So that right here, speak. this right here, this scripture alone just speaks a lot of volume about the unfaithful wife, whether she was unfaithful or not, how they had to go about it to even show, how it was even seen or shown if she was unfaithful or not. And that was a big, big risk to even take, you know, because say if she was and she drank this water, that was it. That was it. Here you are um, putting yourself through, you're causing bitter suffering. You know, abdomen, her abdomen will swell and her thigh waist away. That would, that just, that would have to be painful. That, I mean, your abdomen swollen you know, and your thigh waste away, that would be a lot. So by the grace of God, I pray that she was not guilty. She was innocent because that would have been a really bad, bad situation. But it also goes back to be careful. I always say this when we come across certain chapters, certain scriptures, be careful about what you do, be careful about the sins that you commit against others, or because the whether you uh, you committed against others, you're committing against God. Period. So any sin that you commit, you can't commit it against God because this is because uh, God had laid down. He gave us His commands. He gave us His laws. You know His um, His degrees that we were supposed to live by. So whenever we, even though we may have sinned against someone, we may have done something against someone, we still do it unto the Lord. So. And God already laid down his laws. He already laid down the things that we shouldn't do, the things that we should do and the things that we shouldn't do. And of course, doing not not doing as he called us to do and commanded us to do, there are consequences behind those. And sometimes you don't know the consequences. So being careful about what you do before man and what you do before God, because it can be, life altering it can be it can sometimes it can be temporary or sometimes it can be permanent it can be a permanent damage so be careful and be clear of what you're doing 
and how you're doing it and who you're doing it to. Okay, be careful about wrongful acts, sinful acts towards one another and against God. Because it is against God, first and foremost, it's against God. Because God had already forbid us to do certain things that we are doing. So when we're going against God and doing these things, God's not happy. So when God's not happy, what do you think he's going to do in the process? Yeah, he is a forgiving. He is a merciful God. But also God has to teach us. He has to show us. And how do you think he's going to teach us and show us? If, if we sin and do wrongful things and... Things don't happen to us as far as if we don't learn lessons in the hard way, how else are we supposed to learn? If we don't hurt in some kind of way and have some kind of sympathy or compassion about it and certain things don't get caused behind the wrong that we have caused, how do we ever learn? But once we experience that hurt off of sin and we committed and we experience that hurt and that deep regret and that um, that sympathy that, oh, my goodness, Lord, I shouldn't have did that, that guilt, you know, that Holy Spirit um, convicting you when you don't feel that when you feel that conviction and you know what that feels like. That alone is enough. I don't want to feel that way again. I don't like how that felt. So then you have your, your conscious as to what you are doing. And so your next steps, you're going to be careful about a lot of decisions that you make because you know the consequences and the effects of those feelings and how you felt when you committed those sins. It didn't feel great at all. So now you're making these conscious decisions to hold on. Let me back up. Let me be careful. Let me rethink this as much as I might want to do it. I might not want to do it because I know it goes against what God says. And I remember the last time I did something crazy that was against God. I remember that happened. I remember that happened. And I remember how I felt behind it too. And it wasn't great. And I may have suffered for a long time. I might have suffered for a couple of days. I might have suffered for a couple of weeks. I might have suffered for a couple of months. Hey, I might even suffer for a couple of years. Or I might have suffered. I might just be suffering forever behind it. Because some consequence, it may be a forever consequence. You know what I'm saying? So be careful about what you are doing. Because it's a gamble. It's a risk that you don't want to take. So be careful. Okay? So those are my words. So that's my take on that chapter, this chapter. So guys, I pray that you were blessed. I pray that you received what God has given me to um, share with you all. And I pray that um, you will be blessed by it. And I pray that you will apply it, not just receive it, not just hear it, but apply it. In James, the book of James, he talks about in his chapter, I think it's the second chapter where he say, be hearers and doers of his word. Hearers and doers. Not just hear the word, but receive the word. And not just receive the word, apply the word. Do what the word says do. Okay? Do what it says do. Okay? Just like Faith without works. You can have faith, but when you're not putting action towards faith, it's nothing. Faith without works is dead. So um, let me see how I can say this. Um, action without, no. Um, hearing without action is dead. <laughs> I guess that's how you say it. Hey, that's my way of saying it. So hey, but you get my point what I'm saying. So, but yeah, so hear it. Receive it, apply it, and do what it says, okay? So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Continue to tune in with me each day. And as we continue to read throughout the Bible, as we've gone through Genesis, we've gone through the um, Leviticus, now we are in Numbers. And um, it's been a, hold on, did I miss something though? No, yeah, I'm, we don't went through three books already. I'm tripping. So um, we went through um, Genesis. Exodus, Leviticus, and now we're in Numbers. So we're in the first, fourth book of the Bible. We have gone all the way through from each chapter, I mean, from each chapter, from the beginning to the end of each book. So now we're in the fourth book of our um, of the Bible in Numbers. So continue to come along this journey. Y'all can catch up on, on my page here or on Instagram or on uh, my um, YouTube. 
yeah, my YouTube page. So I'm not hard to find. Um, here, my name here is the same as it is on YouTube, and of course, um, on my Instagram. You can also you should be able to pull me up under my name also on Instagram as well. Just pulling in Latoya or whatever. So anyway, you can catch up with that way um, and get caught up to where we are now. So um, don't forget, for many of you that may be going out tonight, going to work, be safe, social dishes, wash your hands, wear your mask, and be safe, guys. Drive safely. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed, and safe night. And um, God willingly, I will be back with you tomorrow, um, tomorrow evening sometime, since I'll be coming at you, you all late since um, my semester is a little different. My classes are a little different this semester, so I'll be... Um, in class um, um, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 2. So I won't be home to like 3, 4, whatever. So it'll be in a late um, in the evening times now um, when I'll be coming on, if I'm able to come on, depending on really what's going on that day with far as, you know, schoolwork, whatever. So, um, but I will be on Monday through Thursday in the evening times or so. But I can't really promise like what time because it's just really tricky on that. But um, it'll be evenings. Of course, Fridays, probably noon time or something like that because I don't have class on Fridays. But either way I go, I will be on. So um, continue to pray um, that this ministry, this is this what I'm doing, will be able to bring more souls in, be able to bring more people in, and people will be able to be blessed and be able to draw closer to God and you know I'm just on this mission and I just want to be able to help others be able to um read the Bible and understand it in the best way that they can the best way that they know how um the way God wants them to understand it. I want people to be able to draw closer to God. I want people to be able to have that relationship with God to be able to have that desire and that love, that passion for him to um to be able to want to get to know him more. And that's how we get to know him more, you know, reading his word, getting to know who he is, what he likes, what he dislikes and stuff. And so being able to do this every day and to be able to bring more and more people on as I continue to share every day as we learn and grow together. I want other others to be able to learn and share as well and be able to um be able to share their the information with others, you know, but I want us to be able to come to continuously be able to come together to be able to learn this because we're all in this together. So I want us to be able to learn together, um, grow together, stand strong together, pray together, all the things that we need to do. I want us to be able to, you know, come together in these times. And so um like pray for this that um through this i will be able to reach so many people and be able to bless so many people and in turn be able to bless me and in turn bless god and you know be able to praise god and just god getting all the honor and glory out of all of this so um don't forget to be a blessing to someone. It's 732, but don't mean you can't be a blessing. Ain't too late to be a blessing to someone. Ain't, no ain't too late to be able to help someone today because there is always a need somewhere. There's always something, a kind thing you can do for someone still today. Even at 12 midnight, it's always a blessing. <laughs> it's always something that you can always do for someone. So be kind, be caring, be loving, be humble in spirit, be humble with your words, be kind with your words, speak love with your words, be compassionate, pray for each other and lift each other up. Just be forgiving. Do what God has put on your heart to do each and every day. And guys, I say this because I mean this. I, that's why I say this with all my heart every day when I get ready to end this. I always say the same thing every day. Be kind, you know, be a blessing to someone. Even if it's just one person, just one person each day, that's fine. Just one person. I ain't saying go out and, you know, do all these, you know, if that's what you, if God put on your heart to do, then you go right ahead and do that. But be a blessing to someone, you know, because you just never know what, what, that can do for just that one person. You just never know what kind of doors will open up for that one person being a blessing and just speaking something nice or doing something nice or whatever. There's so many things that can be done to someone by being a blessing. So just please 
always look to be a blessing. I know that sometimes we go through things, um, go through things and we're hurting and stuff like that. But sometimes, sometimes when you're going, sometimes going through things, sometimes the best thing you can do is try to think of someone, try to get your mind off whatever problems that you're going through and try to think of someone else and how you can serve someone else, how you can help someone else or whatever. Sometimes that can help, but I guess it depends on what it is that you're probably going through because it may be some really deep, deep, deep problems and trials that you're going through where it's a little hard to even do that and you might have to seek some kind of professional help. So that's kind of hard. So it really just depends on what probably issues that you may be dealing with. But Again, if that's the case, then try to seek some kind of professional help or whatever. But know that I am praying for you all. Continue to pray for me. And um, let's continue to come together and um, lift up God's name and be able to lift up others and continue to just be able to read God's word and learn his word and have a relationship with him so that we can abide in what God has called us to do. So. With that being said, I will leave you all with the word of prayer. Thank you again for tuning in. So let us pray. Father, I ask that you will be with us. Be with us right now. Be with us throughout the rest of this night. Keep us safe. Forgive us, God, for anything that we may have committed before you. Lord, as we have read this scripture, Lord, and as we've been blessed by it, Father, we have been blessed by many of your scriptures, many of your words. So, Father, help us, Father, as we read these scriptures to apply it to our life, Father, to be careful about the sins that we are committing. God, whatever sins that we are committing before you, Lord God, bring to knowledge, bring to our minds, Father, and reveal to us what it is, Father, so that we can confess it, Lord, and repent and turn away from it, Lord. God, we want to be so careful about the things that we are doing before you, Lord God. Because, Lord, we just never know, Father, the consequence, Father, the pain that it may cause us, Father, or the pain that it may cause others, Lord God. So help us to be careful, God. Help us to care about the things that we are doing, Father, the wrongs that we are committing against others, Lord. Because the wrongs that we commit against others, God, is the same wrongs that we're committed against you, Father. So help us to be careful, help us to be mindful, help us to care, Lord. Father, continue to show us the way, Father. Help us to be vigilant in all that we do. Please save us, please deliver us, please comfort us, please heal us, please deliver us, Father. Be with us, Father, in these times, Father, that we're facing, God, as we know that your second coming is coming soon, God. We know, God, that the end of times are coming, Father. So while we're here still, Father, help us to clean our houses up. Help us to clean our, help us to get ourselves together. And help us to be ready, Father, when you come, Lord. Help us to be ready when Christ comes back for us, Lord. Please help us to do whatever it is that we got to do. Help us to get our relationships fixed. Help us, Father, to forgive those, Father, who may have hurt us, who we have not yet forgiven, Lord. But, Father, give us peace. Give us a peace of mind, a peace that surpasses all understanding, and help us to be strong, Lord. Help us to overcome this world, Lord. Help us to be strong. Help us to be mighty. Help us to be warriors for you, Father. Help us to be soldiers for you, Father. Help us to do whatever it is that we got to do. And Father, even if we have to stand alone, Father God, against the crowd, Father, and help us to stand alone, Father, because if that means standing alone and we walk with you, then, Father, we know that it will be all worth it. So help us to do whatever it is that we have to do. But be with us, Father. Lead us every step of the way, Father. Help us to know, God, that we are not alone because you are with us, Lord. And, Father, bless us, Father, with others in our lives, Father God, who will help us on that journey, Father who will pray, Father, who will lift us up, God, who will speak life into our lives, Father. Father, those who are God sent, Father, who you see fit to be in our lives, Father. Bless us with the right people, Father, who will help us, Lord, who will help lead us to Christ. Help us to do just that, Father. Help us to be loving. 
caring and kind and forgiving towards others. And help us to be humble. Help us, Father, to be all that and more. Bless everyone by the sound of my voice, Father. Bless their ears, their eyes. God bless their minds, their hearts. God bless their bodies from head to toe, Father. Bless their families, their friends, God. Comfort those that are mourning around the world, God. So many people are mourning and hurting, Father. Ask that you, Father, will touch their hearts in a special way. And God, you will wipe their tears. You will hold them in the midnight hour, God, when they are hurting the most, Lord. You will be with them and you will whisper in their ears and let them know, God, that you were there and they are not alone, God. But you will see them through every moment, God. See us through. Help us, Lord. Because, God, we can't do it by ourselves. We need you. Guide us every step of the way. Guide our words. Guide our walk. Guide our minds and see us through. Thank you, God, for your spirit. Thank you for your love. Thank you for our hearts that you have given us to love. Thank you for creating us in your image. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son. Thank you for everyone that listens and supports this, Father. And thank you for many others that will. Bless them and bring them in, Father. Help us, Father, to help save souls and bring them closer and closer to you, Father. Help us to do what we have to do. Let our hearts be right with you, Lord. Let everything be right with you. Thank you so much for everything you do. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right, everyone. So be blessed. Have a great night. Sleep well and peacefully. And I will talk with you tomorrow. I love you.